Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the first video of the 21-22 season and I'm doing for the first time really a preview for a particular league and I might not do it for the other leagues that I'm covering but I thought I want to give the Austrian league a little bit of love because of all the leagues that I'm covering it's the one that's definitely the least in the spotlight. Maybe I'm fairly so but there is also some uh, reason in other regards. Uh, it's, Austria is not the most glamorous soccer country, although we have a very deep history. Fun fact, outside of the United Kingdom and after the English League and the Scottish League, the Austrian Bundesliga is the oldest professional league in Europe and therefore the world. So just have that, that, that in mind. Historically, of course, up until World War II, the Austrian Austrian League was only a league of Viennese teams. Um, and then it grew, they let people in and so on and so on. And now it is a league, as we will see, that covers basically the in entire country. Now, um, so I said, yes, my jersey background is only Austria jerseys and Lusk jerseys because as of now I don't have any other Austrian team and this might stay for for a while I when I went through my uh, you know plans for the color collection that I will add Austrian teams the soonest next year and uh, let's see about that there is still a component for me other Austrian teams I am a fan of, of, of a team I have a little bit of a hard time putting it all out, uh, you know, going all out and getting other uh, teams. Although I will do a jersey review. There are some interesting jerseys in Austria always to be had and they are full of sponsors as this last jersey from the 1920 season is a perfect example of. And as I said, I will leave this for the jersey review. But this comes also to my first point, I, you know, I made myself some notes. I don't want to tell too many stories, but you know, it will probably be a good 20, if not 25 minute video. First of the first thing, why should anyone watch the Austrian league? And I would say that uh, many people, including myself, sometimes vo uh, ask myself, I watch it because my favorite team together with Milan, but well, I think overall my favorite team, Lusk, is playing in this league. I am from Austria, so of course I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it. However, I gotta say the Austrian league is a much much better league than it has uh, been given credit for, especially as of late. It is down to the involvement of Red Red Bull and therefore Red Bull raising its own level and actually pulling the league with it. At the moment, they are number ten in the UEFA uh, ranking. That shows that uh, the performance of Austrian teams as of late are much better than one would have expected. I mean, Austrian teams are now tending not only Salzburg, but there's a, often a second team that actually makes it uh, out of the group stages, which shows the strength of the league. In addition, it is actually um, also thanks to Salzburg a very attractive, I mean, gold-filled league that sometimes even is uh, on the brink of innovation. That's especially smaller teams. That's not necessarily the, the, the Viennese teams that very much steeped in their tradition, like with Rapid trying to be this, uh, you know, uh, working class, always up for a good fight team, whereas Austria Vienna always wants to play nicely a little, not really, the, uh, Barcelona comes to mind, but uh, you know, Austria is never playing like Barcelona. But you know, you will get the idea. So there's deep this tradition. Um, however, other teams that don't have such an identity try to carve one out, and Lusk is prime among those of this uh, really nasty uh, pressing, gegen pressing, counter press uh, style of play, which sometimes, to be honest, often looks more as an athletic discipline rather than football because it's really. Uh, ping pong, ping pong in many ways. However, it produces goals, goals, goals. And I have here a graphic um, where I took the uh, from 538 the rating of all the teams that they are covering, all Euro European teams that they are covering, um, which is on the x axis, the lower one. 
And then uh, they also give the rating of how many goals on average uh, do those teams score uh, on the left and to the right, how many um, do they concede. And then I made a trend line, which kind of shows the average. And especially on the part of the goal scored, all Austrian teams are above the black line, except for a few that are on the weaker side of things. So that is rather telling uh, that this is a goal field league and you already see there's one team has a very high rating and scores a whole lot of goals. That's of course Salzburg. On the conceded part, a similar picture with only, I think two teams falling below the black line. And again, Salzburg also a real outlier by conceding also a lot, a lot of goals. Of all the league, of all the eight leagues that I've been covering last season, uh, the Austrian League had by far the most goals with over 3.1 per game. Um, it's also a league that now produces coaches that are in demand uh, in away from home. I mean, the German Bundesliga has quite some Austrian coaches already uh, that came more or less directly from the Bundesliga or, uh, um, or via different ways. I mean, I'm thinking Adi Hütter, uh, Frankfurt now, Gladbach, then Oliver Glasner, who went directly from Lask to Wolfsburg, is now at Frankfurt. Um, there's also Valerian Ismail, a former Lask coach who went to Barnsley uh, and now is, I think, at West Brom. Then uh, Gerhard Struber, who actually was the first one, he went, he was promoted uh, to be the Wolfsburg coach. Then just after a few months, he was going to Barnsley, did some good goals, good with there, and then moved now to uh, Red Bull. Yeah, yeah, he has a big Red Bull uh, background. He moved now to uh, Red Bull New York. So uh, there are coaches that are innovative and in demand, very much to the style that you know Jurgen Klopp and so on is good. The one thing that the one coach that we cannot claim is of course uh, Ralf Haas, ha -ha -ha who made his entire career in Germany by himself. But you see the general direction where this is going. It's also an interesting league. I mean, there are two things that you have to, it's um, when you look at the stadiums and, and in this video, we will look at all the stadiums in, in, in this league. You get a lot of picturesque landscapes in there. And you also see that there's a clear, uh, the big teams have a pretty good stadium infrastructure. I, I have to say all over the stadium infrastructure has been uh, improving a lot over the past 10 years. But you see a lot of village grounds as well, where you get a lot of sweeping landscapes, which actually I started now to preferring, especially with the empty stadiums. Now when it's full, it might be better, but um, give me Hartberg over New Camp. Oh. So I gave, give me a few reasons to watch. Uh, the next thing is, what is new this season in Austria? There are actually three things. The first of them, Austria finally has VAR. And it will be a complete disaster. I know how Austrians do it. Austrians, although many fans probably have been watching the German Bundesliga and are a little bit used to the fact, I am absolutely sure that as everywhere, everywhere else, no one will get it at first. And it will lead to huge discussions and huge scandals. And why do we want it and get rid of it right away? Um, so that's what I can expect. However, it's a big in introduction that I think was long overdue and that a country as well as Austria is now three years behind is actually quite telling of how much, of how, how, how much money there is in Austrian soccer. It is not a lot. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, of course, coaching changes. Uh, we didn't have all that many. However, there are some in the, in the interesting ones. If you look here at all the coaches, uh, I put in the current coaches. We have now two German coaches. German coaches have not been doing very well uh, in Austria for us. For some reason, but we have uh, Jaisle, who came up from Liefering, the official farm team of Red Bull Salzburg, although they're an independent club. Uh, after Jesse Marsh left to Leipzig. Yes, Leipzig. We got an, uh, a coach that was from straight from the Austria Bundesliga is another one to add to that list. Uh, and then we have Robin Dutt. Uh, I think he had, uh, he was at Leverkusen and Nürnberg in Germany. He is basically the star signing. He's now at Wolfsburger uh, AC or WAC as we call it. Uh, don't call it Wolfsburg. It's Wolfsburg. It's Wolfs. The ER means from that town. So, um, uh, Robin Dutt is, is definitely the big name that is now in the league. I'm curious uh, how he, he will do. Uh, typical German coaches, for some reason, the, it 
there is just some culture clash very often there that does not really work. It works better often the other way around. Um, another big change is that Markus' uh, shop went to Barnsley, so he is now replaced by his assistant Kurt Russ. Um, and then uh, I think another one, Andy Herzog, finally has a club job at a lowly Admira. He was, of course, the head coach of Israel um, not too long ago. So uh, that is new. And then the last thing that is new is we have a new team in the league uh, via promotion playoffs. And we'll talk about that. Um, they only finished third. But since uh, the first place team didn't want to go up, team from Linz, the other team uh, couldn't get up, Liefering. The third place team had to play a playoff against St. St. Burton and uh, romped into league. We have Austria Klagenfurt. It is a very traditional name. However, I think it's the third or the fourth team with that name. They usually go bust down there. However, as we will see, um, it has a very, very big advantage because we'll get a very good location. And also, uh, St. Burton loses like one cap, one cap capital from a province. With Klagenfurt, you get one back, which is always good. So we didn't add another village team in a way. So, what's new? The next thing is where to watch. Well, you can watch it, of course, on TV in Austria. Sky uh, would be your choice, but you know, I'm not sure you can uh, get this. Uh, your best uh, bet to watch it is the highlights on YouTube, Sky Sport Austria. Uh, they usually take a day or two, but you get every, every, everything there. I'm linking the channel above there. So that would be your best option. Yes, it is in German, but to be honest, um, I follow other leagues as well, and even if, if I don't understand, you can see at least the goals and so on. So uh, that is at least interesting. And you can watch it in the stadiums. And let's look at all these stadiums. We have the full list here. You see also where that they are located. And from the stadiums, you can very much tell, uh, is this a team that is one of the village teams? Or you also can tell a lot about the landscapes. Very often you can tell they definitely city teams. And we'll start with a probably the most famous stadium at the Mo, uh, at, at the Mo Austria, which is the Red Bull Arena in Salzburg, um, built for Euro 2008. I've never been there. However, it is one. Of, it is nominated the biggest stadium in Austria in the Austrian league at the moment. But for Bundesliga games, the top uh, half. The top six this is this action is tarped off so it's only the lower part that actually receives spectators which reduces the size to around 14 to 15 thousand uh, which is enough for Salzburg um, the other huge stadium that you probably should, should know is the Allianz Stadion in Vienna for Rapid uh, in the 14th di di district on the western entrance uh, newly built um, uh, I think it's now uh, four years old or something like that. Um, it is now really the one that where the most spectators are, where, the, where you, Rapid is known. They are the most uh, followed team in Austria. They get the most spectators. Spec Rapid is a factor. Uh, if, if Rapid is having an away game, this means that uh, the, whoever they are that are playing, has of course many many uh, people there too. They are the team uh, in that regard, however they're not as successful on the pitch. The stadium itself, I think the most um, famous feature is this uh, entire standing terrace that is not broken up by any anything where the relatively uh, vocal support, I mean not always pretty because you know ultras and so on and they have been causing some trouble here and there so i mean i'm very touch and go they make great atmosphere and probably that stadium is the best place to watch a game however it uh, mood can turn rather quickly there as well another nice stage stadium is the one for sturm graz is the uh Nominal Stadion Lieben, I think it's called the Merkur Arena. It was the Arnold Schwarzenegger Stadium when it was built. It was built in the late 90s. It was uh, back then a really, really nice stadium. Now it's, it's already showing its age a little bit. However, it's a nice football uh, arena and you can definitely watch some. Uh, it is definitely a nice place to watch a game. I've been a few times there and I have, have, have to say it shows its age, but it's a nice stadium. Um, now the almost the smallest stadium of the top teams is the one from Lusk and the main reason is because um, for a long time there was a problem with the city of Linz where they went out of the huge athletic stadium 
and now they went uh, to Pushing in the suburbs, uh, southwestern suburbs of Linz, in a very small arena. However, um, it has one advantage. It's a nice socks of arena, and you know, with all already 4,000 people, you have a quite good the atmosphere there. The disadvantage is a very, very small field, which some claim is not very conducive for the play that Lusk is now uh, doing. However, the upside is that in, a, in probably two years or so, the new stadium will be built and then it will be right there, you know, around uh, 25,000 uh, built, really nice looking. Uh, it's the big project for Lusk and I'm very, very excited. Also will have a nice, uh, for, for the fans, a nice block that is not two-tiered, but a one-tiered -tier block, although the, the rest of the stadium will be a two-tiered stadium. Um, what the first village stadium is, of course, the one uh, in Wolfsburg, uh, the Lavantal uh, Arena, um, which built a new stand on the other side, but you see the athletic tracks, you see a rather sparse um, surroundings. The big feature there is, of course, the landscape behind, because it's right in, uh, in the middle of the Alps. Um, even more so, and also stadium was built in the late night, is the Tivoli Stadium in Innsbruck. And despite being a modern stadium, I mean, also 20 years old now, it has everything, landscape and so on. The problem is Tirol, VSG Tirol, is not Wacker Innsbruck, so there are barely any spectators there. So that's why I wouldn't recommend it. If, you, uh, if Wacker Innsbruck was playing there, that could be a really nice starting point for you because you get the full Austria experience. A uh, great stadium, well-supported team, but it's not around this time. But it will get be easy to get tickets. Another village stadium, Hartberg. Uh, another stadium, a lot like Wolfsburg. And again, one where the, cam the camera goes a little bit left and to the right. You see the school to the left and you see the entire village, including the church and then the high uh, hills to the right. It is just Gorgeous to watch it there. Uh, the team has also not been doing too badly. We'll see how they will do. Um, we have the second to last city stadium is of course uh, the Akkoi of Franzhoa Stadium because that was the original name of the stadium there. Um, it is the Generali Arena of Austria Vienna who built also an, a really nice sta stadium. It's a little bit hard to reach although not as a subway going there but it's also on the southern edge of Vienna. It's a yeah, it's not the best location for it, but it's a it's a it's it's a really nicely built stadium. Meanwhile, um, and then let's look at a few village stadiums. Ried, close to uh, Linz, it's the closest rival that Lars has. They built uh, in the mid two thousands a really nice uh, jewel box. One will say not many spectators in there, but it does for the team very very well. Alta, similar story. They have expanded and really made it a nice day. A nice day the stadium we see on three uh, sides. It's nicely built. However, it's not a big stadium. But Alta in Vorarlberg, all the way in the west, doesn't need much more. It's a little bit funny that Alta, which is one of those smaller towns, th I, this region has many many towns that are kind of growing into each other. That among the few that went there, that it became Alta now that has the best stadium, is a little bit, uh, I think, an error of history. In my Opinion, but then you know, sometimes luck strikes. The I think not, I don't want to say it's the oldest day stadium, but the one uh, that I definitely know is the one from Ad, Ad, Ad Miravaka. This is um, for many athletes in Austria that are not so great, they have their base right at that stadium, the stadium itself was built in the 70s and it has one stand. And other than that, they have not done a whole lot, but the tarp tarped off. Uh, this is a stadium that barely sees any spectators. Admira Vaca is a team that has been playing for ages in the top league. Uh, it is a fusion of two famous teams, of uh, or, or two teams from, from Vienna that had their own support. Then they moved to the south, lost all the support. It is famous for this one fan with the drum who sometimes comes with his two or three, two, three buddies in there and making some noise. Any team that has a sizable source of support, and we're looking here, especially Rapid, Sturm, Lask, Austria, these teams, if they're doing well and they come with fans, you have a home game there for free. That's the only reason why I like that Admira is in the league. I personally think they have lots of tradition, they have no fans, and I always think of 
any teams that I could spare, Admira is always the one that comes first to mind. And then, thanks to Klagenfurt, we have the most beautiful stadium in Austria, also now in the league, although it will be used by LASK for international games because the arena in Pasching, nope. Uh, forget about it. Um, if it is properly deforested, that stadium holds 30,000, although they will do something similar on the lower bowl, but it's a beautiful stadium and I'm very happy that there are spectators there. So, you know where to play, where to watch and so on. Let's move further. What are the team's objectives going forward? Also goes now to before we go there to the former. The former is so that we have a, a first a regular season where all of the twelve teams play each other. Then the league will be split in two in an upper and a lower half, and the points are halved to increase the suspense. It doesn't because Salzburg is that dom the dom dominant the one time that it could have done. Uh, not the last season, but the season before when Lusk did, 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 did it. Well. Lusk imploded by, 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 by themselves and in the end it didn't work out for them. So, and with that then, the playoff round then of course counts more and this is where the championship is decided. Austria gets a whole lot of spots. What we'll see here is that uh, Salzburg of course is favored then for second space. Three teams, Rapid, Lusk and Sturm, Probably at the moment uh, look like uh, that they might go for the second Champions League qualification spot. I am a little bit down for Lask. I have some doubts because the captain is uh, potentially off to Rotterdam, Feyenoord. But you know, they got some replacement. But I think for Lask, ever since they moved up, they always finished top four, which is the best sustained period that Lask ever had. And still, fans are a little bit uh, miffed because uh, there's a feeling that Lask at least for the past three seasons, should have been the second best team. I think now it's a little bit more, yeah, we go fourth, fifth place is, I think, the overall uh, feeling. Wolfsburg could probably move up there. I, I'm, I would like to see Austria Wien do uh, well as well. And on the bottom, it is mostly the village teams, even if Tirol is playing Innsbruck, they're village teams. So uh, we have Tirol, Hartberg, Arter, Ried, and Admira, yeah, it's on the uh, Oscars. Klagenfurt is the only non-village team in there. And for some, I actually have to say it would be good if that team can stay in the league. When does the whole thing start? Well, technically it's already started. We had already a cup round. Uh, didn't hear some selected re results from the top 10 teams from the last season where they have conceded only three goals. The problem is, yeah, okay, uh, Salzburg conceded one but had no problem uh, too far away, all of them playing against third-tier teams. However, Altach was eliminated by Karlsdorf. I saw the game for Lusk against Machfeld. It's a typical cup cup game after 15 minutes, it was 2-0. Two, 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 two it went rather ra 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 fast and the coach was still not happy because it should have been double figures uh, with the amount of Dortmunds and goal chances they had. So, saying that. However, the first round will be played on Friday. It opens with quite a big game. Sturm Graz against Salzburg. That's third against first from last season. Um, it's a big opening. It's the first time that a VAR will be used in the Bundesliga. So, that, that's a big one. Um, other standout game is Klagenfurt against Wolfsburg. That's a Corinthian derby. They're both in the south. Uh, so, that is interesting to see. And I also want to say that the next round has a similar uh, marquee fixture. Lask against Rapid. So, it's really, really front low. low. So, we have three against one. Now, we have four against two in the second round. We also get um, another southern duel between Wolfsburg and Sturm Graz, uh, which is also uh, one that is uh, quite interesting to see. Okay, that was it, my little preview to the Austrian League. Uh, I hope I could pique a little bit of interest. I'm sorry if the stadium tour was a little, little bit long, but I thought I have to show you because it gives a picture of the state of Austrian soccer at this moment. Again, I will try to do updates, maybe during my vacation. I'm not sure how I will do that. So, but you know, by mid August, I will catch you up and I will tag the Austrian league on with the Bundesliga. You'll get a little bit highlights uh, from my point of view as well. Mostly focused on my favorite team. I repeat again, LASK. But I'm not saying you should support LASK, although this would make, may, may, make, may make me very happy. Uh, choose any team. It makes it more fun to watch. Don't choose Salzburg, or repeat for that matter.
<laughs> Just saying. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day.